ultra processed foods, these are foods that when you see like a, a field of corn or a field of wheat and somehow that shit becomes Pop Tarts mm. or a bowl of Lucky Charms. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Or Funyuns. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Right? Why is our government allowing this to happen? And for that girl backstage, they make it publicly clear. Never mind who you thought I was. I'm Rick James, bitch. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right. Travel outside the country. I see a lot of foods here that are banned in other places in the world. Yeah. Banned. Banned. You can't even sell it legally in mm -hmm. a grocery store, and it's everywhere here in yeah. the United States. It's crazy, yeah. What is that? <laughs> I mean, there's a whole plethora of foods that are that are like that. In particular, certain additives that we use in the in the U.S., like certain food dyes, are outlawed. You know, many of them have been found to contribute to ADHD in children, and also carcinogens. And also, there's this new category of contaminants that we have a lot of data on now, called obesogens. All right, so oh, these are obesity hmm. causing agents. Have you guys talked about like the difference between ultra processed food and processed food before? I was going to ask you that part too, okay, but go okay. for it. Yeah. All right. So humans have been processing foods forever, taking the olives and pressing the oil out or coconuts mm -hmm. pressing the oil out. So processing is not the issue. You can still tell what, where those foods came from. Ultra processed foods. These are foods that when you see like a, a field of corn or a field of wheat and somehow that shit becomes Pop-Tarts mm. or a bowl of Lucky Charms. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, or Funyuns, mm -hmm. uh -huh. right? Why is our government allowing this to happen? An analysis that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association looked at how this is happening. How can we go to Jack in the Box mm -hmm. and get two for 99 cent tacos, but an avocado costs $3? One avocado that falls off a tree cost more than two cost intensive tacos including all the the meat all the so-called vegetables, vegetables yep. right. the all the the processing of making it the wrapping the marketing all that stuff is very cost intensive how does that cost less and what it is is because of government subsidies so this study found that the u.s government had contributed about 200 billion dollars over this 15 year time span to companies processed food companies essentially that are making products that end up coming through the drive-through window and then processed foods. So genetically modified wheat, corn, soy, because when we go to the grocery store, it looks like a whole, bu whole bunch of diversity, but it's a, a lot of that's made from the same shit. This other analysis found that they looked at who's consuming these government subsidized foods. They found that in particular, low-income communities mm -hmm. and people who had the highest intake of government subsidized foods had a 30% greater incidence of having obesity, type 2 diabetes, inflammation, all these things. Yeah. And then that by by nature, and this is another one of the things that's proven in the science, when we reach these states, it's more difficult to make it out of poverty. Mm. And so it becomes this vicious circle. Yep. And so the truth is the system that we have allowed to be built is profiting from our, from our sickness. It's profiting from our ignorance. It's profiting from our pain. We have a $4.2 trillion healthcare system. And we have the sickest nation in the history of humanity. Something's not adding up. And so I'm a big fan of looking at the results. We're not doing okay because we're allowing people to take advantage of us. Shit is over now. In the last decade, the evidence has been slowly growing that ultra-processed food is harmful for us in ways we hadn't thought. The twins find there is one ingredient they keep seeing again and again on food packets. And then the emulsifiers again. We've seen that a few times, haven't yeah. we? Emulsifiers are essentially a glue. They stick components together so that they have a good mouth feel and they don't fall apart in your mouth or on the plate. So here we have carboxymethylcellulose, CMC, which is one of the commonest emulsifiers used in the food industry. And I'm just going to demonstrate what happens when you just add water to it and it very rapidly becomes like a glue. The food industry uses around 60 different emulsifiers to enhance the appearance, texture and shelf life of ultra-processed foods. Some are naturally occurring, others are chemically produced. It's found an incredible number of our foods and they are potentially harmful. 
significant associations between uh, emulsifier intake and increased risk of cancer overall and uh, breast cancer notably, uh, but also with uh, cardiovascular diseases. Finally, Professor Batterham wants to know if eating a high ultra-processed food diet has affected my brain. We've repeated the scan from a month ago to compare the results. Blue is how areas of your brain talk to each other before the diet. So everything that's red is a new connection between parts of your brain that wasn't there before. So eating ultra-processed food has become something my brain simply tells me to do without me even wanting it. This is something you might see in a person with addiction. This is terrifying, isn't it? My concern is that children's brains are still developing and they're much more malleable than mine, which means the changes are likely to be even greater. There are lots of children in this country who are on my diet from a very early age. Do we have any idea what that's doing to them? Really? Even as an obesity expert, Appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for watching. Make sure you bang that subscribe button. This is One Blood Podcast. You heard?